Greetings, it's the New York Thrifter here, and I went thrifting twice this week, uh, once at the Goodwill and once at a local thrift store close to me in New Jersey. And so what I did is I'm really focusing on fall fashions and what I want to post on my Poshmark and eBay stores. So I'm going to walk you through some of my shopping, and then I'm going to show you the haul for everything that I got. And then I'm also going to show you how I like to price things and find comparables. And so I'm running through the jeans very fast. Jeans are very popular in the fall as it gets cooler. And so I found a whole bunch of nothing today in the jeans. I only got uh, a few pair. I did find a couple of dojo. Those are seven for mankind. And here you're going to see here is one pair. I and I didn't end up buying either of them. They were both about $12 and both of them had significant wear on the hemline. And I know a lot of people would buy them anyway, but I'm pretty much a stickler for buying um, things that don't have any wear because I find that I don't get a lot of returns that way. And so I did say no to the dojos, which I know a lot of people are going to be yelling about. After the jeans, I went over to sweaters and I flipped through. Um, I was kind of focusing on finding more cardigan styles or open cardigans. Those seem to be quite popular. But of course, I'm always looking for really great brands and really great fabrics. Wool, cashmere, uh, things with silk in them oftentimes do well. And so that's what I was focused on. I was finding some really not great brands, but if you keep watching, I do have some brands for you to look out for, including some that you probably haven't heard about before. Whenever I'm thrifting, I always make time to go through the blazers. Um, I it's, it's a very underappreciated section in the store, in my opinion, and I always find amazing, amazing deals in the blazers because I know what I'm looking for and I know the brands that I'm looking for. So on this trip, I actually found two things that I, for resale in the blazers. One is an anthropology jacket. The other one is a designer piece that I go over at the end of the video. But I really suggest you start looking in the blazers to find some great deals. You're going to notice even though this is going into fall and into winter for my thrift, I don't go to the larger winter coats and the reason for that is they're so big and they're so bulky and they take up so much room and they're hard for me to ship that I generally will stay away from them. So the blazers are about as big as I go when I'm looking at the store. Don't forget about the dresses when you're shopping for fall and into winter transition. There are some great brands that have sweater dresses, there are wool dresses, and there's the ever popular uh, office dress um, that does really, really well in resale. And so just because we are going into the colder months doesn't mean you can't find dresses that are going to be appropriate. People still have to go to work. They still have to go to the office. And some women just really enjoy wearing dresses. Now, you are going to notice that I skip the skirt section. Oftentimes I find that the skirts don't have a great resale value for me and going into winter I just didn't see it being necessary so I didn't even bother going over into that section. One section I did go into which I always do kind of unwillingly is the shoe section. I don't particularly like selling shoes. I don't like uh, cleaning them up. I don't like that they um, have to be shipped in boxes. But I will go over because there are usually some really, really great uh, resale finds to be had in the shoes. I suggest um, if, if you don't like shopping and buying shoes like I do, only get ones that are in perfect condition because you really don't want to spend too much time with them. I do have some leather polish and other things that kind of gently clean them up, but if there's ever... A major problem with a shoe if a sole is falling off or there's major scuffs with it I honestly just leave it behind it's not worth it to me I know it's just gonna sit in my death pile and not be listed so I only go for the shoes that are in very good condition I did pick up uh, four pairs this week and I'll be showing you those in a little bit and they are uh, boots because we are going into fall and boots tend to sell pretty well
So I'm going to begin this haul with a jacket that is absolutely perfect for fall. This is the brand Hey Hey, which is sold at Anthropology, size small. This is a moto jacket, you can tell because there's an asymmetrical zip. It has laser cut perforations on it and it is a, a vegan leather or a fake leather. I love the term vegan leather because that just means it's fake. Um, but this is going to look really great with a pair of jeans and maybe some tall boots. Absolutely perfect for the fall. This next brand, I actually have two pieces. Sonia Reichel, I want to say, and this is actually a very famous uh, designer brand. I have this open cardigan that has uh, stripes on it, and then I have this pullover sweater that has stripes on the arm. And this brand has been making designer pieces known for their knits for a very long time. I visited a fashion museum and I saw some original pieces. These are not going to be vintage. These are uh, newer Sonia Reichel, but if you ever find them, I do suggest that you check them out. This is a brand I don't know how to pronounce. I've seen it a couple of times and I looked it up because one of the thrift stores that I like to visit had this on their designer rack. And so when I looked it up, I want to say Oska. Somebody's probably going to gonna, gonna uh, tell me the right way to say that. But this is... A really expensive brand. You can um, get these for hundreds of dollars. They're kind of a boiled knit. And this one is kind of an open cardigan, although it does have that one button on top. It is in a deep purple color, which does really well. It's a great transition color into the fall. And people really seem to like these open styles of cardigan. So if you do find uh, one of these, I do suggest you get it. Also, whenever you're dealing with wool, what you want to do is you want to like put your hand in and you want to pull it out and you want to look all over just to make sure there's no holes in it because obviously holes are a big deal when you're dealing with wool and also when you're dealing with cashmere. This is a J. McLaughlin. I've talked about this brand before. I really like selling this brand because it has a very, very loyal following. And usually I will sell their dresses. They have very um, pretty pattern dresses in a Catalina cloth that sells well. But this happens to be a 100% cashmere open knit sweater and it is in a very vibrant blue color Sorry. and we all know this brand this is Sundance and this is mainly sold through a catalog very exclusive brand it has a great resale value this is made out of lamb's wool and as you can see it has kind of a winter theme almost Nordic design going on and that is a very very popular pattern uh, to be sold during the winter. So if you see something with this pattern on it, you know that that can be very popular with buyers. And finally, another brand that you're definitely going to recognize. This is a Lafayette 148. It is a cardigan and it has a bit of a metallic thread to it. It's got a bit of bling. And that's good because as we get to the end of the year, people are starting to look for a little bit more uh, festive pieces. Maybe they have um, a Christmas party that's during the day. And so they might wear, you know, their black wool sheath dress might pop this on top if it's in, you know, uh, maybe November or December. And so they can look festive, but it's still appropriate for day wear. And so the brand is great. The style is great. And I just realized I wasn't giving you the prices on this. So let me go back and check. I believe by looking at all of these, I paid for the sweaters $6.99 a piece. So $7 a piece. One of the Sonia pieces was a little bit more. It was $7.99. And then for the jacket, the anthropology jacket, I did pay up for this. I did pay $10 for this. I like to list less and photograph less, but make as much money as possible. 
And so I don't mind paying up for pieces that I know are going to do really well online. And so a $10 price tag or an $8 price tag doesn't bother me as long as I know that the profit is going to be there. So while I'm going through this haul, I'm also going to show you how I like to price my items and to give you a better idea of the deals that I'm expecting to get. So the first thing that I showed you was the Anthropology Hey Hey Moto Jacket. And so I typed that into eBay. I went to sold and I want to see what other people are getting for similar jackets. This is $35. The best offer was accepted. This one is $49. This one sold for $48 on best offer. And this one was new without tags, sold for $50 with free shipping. And the look, this one looks very close to the one that I have. It is the faux suede moto jacket in gray. And so uh, it looks to me like uh, eBay would probably $39 I'd probably list it at and then maybe look at a best offer. Now, I also want to look at what uh, is going on over at Poshmark, and the reason for that is uh, Anthropology does very well on this site as well, sometimes even better than eBay. And so, as we can see, I'm looking at the solds for the same jacket, and we've got 45, 60, 20, 40, 50, 47, and so it does look like this probably would do better on uh, Poshmark and so I will end up cross posting this and I will probably put it at around $50 and then on both platforms $49.99 on eBay and $50 on Poshmark but then I would expect to get offers on both. So next up I want to look at the uh, Sonia Reichel sweater and I typed in stripes because that is a very popular pattern done by this uh, design company. So here's one that sold for $14.76, and that was bid up with quite a high price of shipping. When this is italicized, usually that means it went internationally. So that's why that shipping is probably so high. Here is a longer tunic length that was $29 best offer. Here's a striped sweater, $29 on bid, $72 with a best offer accepted. Here is a piece that is an H&M collaboration. And it's interesting that this one sold for $49 because usually when you collaborate with a mall brand like H&M or even a lower end brand like Target, uh, the piece won't hold its value. But this one actually looks like it did rather well. Here's a very striped sweater and this one sold for $79. Okay, so we're looking at some pretty good prices here, $32, $29. Probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna price it rather high. I'm probably gonna put it at around maybe uh, $45 or $49 with a best offer and see what people are willing to spend on it. And just to show you how popular this designer is, I actually found a shot of the former first lady wearing one of her sweaters. This has a little heart on the, uh, on the side of it with the stripes. So like I said, very popular designer. Next up is the Osaka sweater. And let's see what we sold here. This is a red alpaca. It sold for $40 on best offer. This one was bid up to $13.59. This very long lag and look crochet sweater sold for 7050. Here's another jacket for 3337. So probably what I'm going to do for this one is definitely not put it on auction because it doesn't look like it's getting bid up very much, but I would probably go for around maybe again 49 or uh, maybe even $59 with best offer to see what I could get for it. This is the J. McLaughlin cashmere sweater in we have one in uh, bright blue. This one is $31 best offer, $29 best offer, $9 on auction. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the auction. This one sold for $22.95 on best offer, and that actually looks very close to what we have only in 
the uh, lighter color. And it says here that the price was originally $298 on this. That's just amazing. So I'll probably put a price of about $34 with best offer on it and hope to get around $30. Let's look at the Sundance wool sweater. So this Sundance sweater went for $34.95, $27.99 best offer, and that's a vest, $24.99. This long one went for $55. I'm probably going to place it rather close to this. Um, this has a uh, winter design as well, and so probably around... Uh, $35, maybe even $39 with best offer on my Sundance. And finally, the Lafayette 148, uh, we've got sold for $23 best offer, $19 best offer, $16 best offer, $29 best offer, $28. And so it looks up to be around $29 is the going rate, I'll probably put it up for that much and uh, see what comes. Now, something that you're going to notice for the last couple of pieces, including the Sonia Reichel, the Osaka, the Jay McLaughlin, the Sundance, and the Lafayette 148, I'm not looking on Poshmark for those. Poshmark tends to be a marketplace that caters to a bit of the younger crowd. So something from anthropology or free people usually does really well over there. Why some of these other brands like a Lafayette 148, which is designed more for a working career woman that happens to be maybe a little bit more mature, isn't really looking for maybe the boho style that people on Poshmark are looking for. Now that's not to say that these brands won't sell over on Poshmark, but because I have limited time to post, I don't always cross post everything. And so I've kind of made the decision for these types of sweaters not to cross post them. But if you have the time and inclination, you absolutely could put both of, or all of these sweaters on both sides to see what gets the best deal. So let's take a look at the shoes that I got, or in this case, boots. First up is a the brand Seychelles. Now, this is sold at Anthropology, but not always. And so in order to say this is an Anthro boot, I would have to find it on their website. And I don't believe this was actually sold uh, through the store. It is a tall, all leather boot in black with some uh, buckle details here. It is new. It still has the sticker on the bottom and it still has the uh, packaging inside. Now, these are really great for fall because, you know, a basic black, everyone needs a pair. It has a very low wedge heel, so it can navigate during cold weather. And these look particularly good uh, with a pair of skinny jeans tucked into them. And so I got uh, this pair, which is an eight and a half for $5.99. And so I'm very pleased with them. This is a coach, and I believe they're called a Shane boot, and these are more a winter boot. And so they might not sell right away unless the person is uh, getting ready for winter. I did pay up for these. I paid about, I want to say $13.99 for these, but I really liked them. They're in kind of a brown color. I believe they, they look pretty new. Oh, here's a price, $14.99. They look pretty new. They're not going to take a lot of work. The bottom is a little bit dirty, but on the actual boot itself, it is in uh, really, really great, great quality. And so I did grab these winter boots. Up next are booties, and these are Stuart Weitzman. A really expensive brand when you buy these new. These are booties with an extremely tall heel. They are not very practical for the winter. However, if you are transitioning into fall and you're looking for something maybe to wear to work, uh, these would be absolutely perfect. It's, heels a little tall for me, but there are people out there that can wear them. Now this was $19.99 half off, so I paid $10 for this pair of Stuart Weitzman. And finally, I have a pair of Donald J. Pliner. And let's see, you can see on the bottom, 
Donald J. Pliner there. These are what they call the Cameron Crushed Velvet Combat Boot. And so they are a deep navy combat boot. They're in excellent condition. I paid $8.99 for them. And this is for a little bit maybe of a younger crowd or, uh, you know, kind of more of a statement boot. Let's look at some boots that have sold. These are Stuart Weitzman. And I typed in booties because they're the short booties with the big heel that I have. These sold for $117 best offer, $24.99 best offer. Those are a little tall. Here's a heel in red for $36. Here's another heel, $119 best offer. This is $36.99 best offer. So it looks to be a little all over the place with Stuart Weitzman. Uh, pretty much what you have to do when you're faced with um, large discrepancy in prices is price it what you want to see, what you want to get for it. So for example, if you want to sit on it at $99 or best offer, that's absolutely a choice you can make. Or you can probably sell it faster if you placed it more at a $59 mark with best offer. Now, I know that shoes tend to sell rather well over on Poshmark. One of the reasons uh, for that is uh, because the shipping is easier on Poshmark. It's a flat rate shipping of $6.95 for the buyer, whereas on eBay, shoes that are heavier over a pound tend to ship in boxes that are much more expensive. So people will oftentimes go to Poshmark to buy their shoes just because they feel like they're getting a better deal, but in all actuality, they can end up spending more because people price the shoes higher on Poshmark. So let's look at some of the heel booties here. We have $150, $45. These are $225. They're suede sock boots. Wish I had those. Here's a pair for $68 that sold. $15. That person got an excellent deal. So again, you just have to price it at what you feel the market can bear, and it really depends on how much profit you want back versus how much time you want to wait for it to sell. Here are the coach boots that we were looking at, and they are the Shane Signature. So here is a pair with the logos all over them for $19 was the bid. Here is a black pair, $33 best offer, and another pair with the logo on it for $11.50 that was bid up. So this boot doesn't seem to do very well on eBay. Let's look over on Posh, and we're getting better prices here. $45, $80, $45, $56. Thirty-four and forty-six. So probably what I'll do with these boots is I'll mark them at around forty-nine dollars on both sites and see where the best offer comes from. For the Seychelles boots, let's try to find a tall pair. This one went for forty-nine dollars on best offer, and. That looks like the only tall one. Let me get rid of the wedge. It's such a small wedge. Let's see. No, nope, these are all very short boots. Here's a taller pair that sold for $50. Here's a tall pair, $35 on best offer. Tall pair, $45. These were brand new. Now they are... Here is a higher wedge that sold for 30. These uh, tall ones sold for 30. So yeah, it looks like on both sites, $30 looks like the going rate for tall leather Seychelles boots. And for the last pair, we have the Donald J. Pliner. And these are new that sold in the crushed velvet uh, dark blue. And they sold for $59 on best offer. Okay, over on Poshmark, we're looking at similar pairs that sold for $45, $35. OK, 
Okay, so it looks like maybe I will price them at around 30 or $34 on both sites. Now, I didn't do well so well for the bottoms. I have three pairs of pants that I did grab. Uh, the first is Cartonnier, which is an anthropology brand. This is the Charlie ankle in size four. And this is what they call the teal velvet flocked pant. And I really liked uh, that this kind of screamed uh, Christmas to me. I'm, I'm again thinking somebody might be going to a party or wanting to get a little more festive. And that's definitely something that they can grab. Um, also, it only uh, cost me, it was half off. So I purchased that for $4. I paid full price $8 for these pair of page jeans. They are a size 26 in a very dark wash. Here we go. And the name of it is right here is the Hoxton ankle. And I really like um, any ankle or skinny jeans. I just think they're more of in style now. I don't go so much for the flare or boot cut um, just because right now it seems like people are going uh, the skinnier um, legging type jeans seem to be selling better for me. And for these, I paid $11. These are a pair of rag and bone jeans size 27 and they are the dray cut and it's a medium wash and they are distressed and I really love rag and bone jeans because uh, when you buy these new they can be upwards of 200 or 250 dollars so even at 11 dollars for reselling I definitely can make a really great profit on these so tops what you're going to notice is I've got a lot of long sleeve tops they tend not to be in too bright of color I say that as this Eileen Fisher is right on top in a bright yellow but I really like this it's linen it's 1x a button down Eileen Fisher always does really well for me it does have a longer sleeve so definitely a more appropriate a uh, transitioning into the fall season and anytime you can get a plus size Eileen Fisher I recommend it because it does sell very well this is a Jude Conley top and it's definitely not my taste it is um, what do we want to say, like couch chic maybe, 70s couch chic, um, but it's made out of a cloth that is very popular. It's a very stretchy cloth. Um, it has a great following, generally a little bit of an older clientele, um, and it seems like the more uh, abstract the pattern, the brighter, the more vivid the pattern, the better these do. So when I do see Jude Conley, which I see a lot in both tops as well as dresses, I definitely go and pick that up. Here is a Haute Hippie, another very expensive brand. And this tends to go to a bit of a younger crowd. And this is made out of silk. It's got kind of an abstract animal print, I want to say maybe. It does have the longer sleeves on it. And so, and a kind of a darker palette, really nice. Now this is the only short sleeve that I got while I was out. And this is a silk top by Joie. This brand, again, is a bit to the younger crowd, does really well. A lot of people uh, find this very easy to just throw on. You're wearing a uh, tank and some jeans. This goes right over the top of that. I thought the colors were very uh, season appropriate. So I grabbed that. Soft Surroundings is definitely a bread and butter for me. I uh, really like to get it when it's in good condition. Uh, people are very eager to buy this up. They usually know what their size is because when they have one soft surrounding uh, piece, they'll probably have more in their closet. Very brand loyal. I did get this for half off, so I paid $4 for it. And it is a deep red with long sleeves. It's kind of a t-shirt material, but then when you get to the side, you have this velvet floral pattern. And I want to say maybe those are like an orchid floral pattern. And it does have a v-neck in the front so i think this is going to go very very quickly hopefully 
This next piece is a Madewell and I really like it not only for the brand and because it is new with tags, but also this type of plaid tends to be very popular. This is not quite a buffalo plaid, which is the black and red, but it's very close. People seem to be drawn to this type of plaid and color. Spent $9 on it, new with tags, and it is kind of got a peplum there going on at the bottom and then it does button all the way down the back. So a really interesting piece. This is another plus size piece that I got. It is a 3X Pure Jill, which is part of the J Jill company. And it is new with tags. I spent half of 16, so $8 on this. And it is a very long tunic top. It has a texture to it. It's got pockets. And again, it is a 3X, great size, especially for J. Jill. J. Jill tends to be a bit uh, more mature for a brand. And so um, you really find uh, loyal customers. Again, they have a whole closet full of J. Jill when they do buy it. Vince, one of my favorite brands to resell because it is just so popular and so expensive when it's brand new. Um, I, of course, bought this um, on sale. I think all of these tops, any top that doesn't have a tag on it, uh, pretty much you can bet I spent around $6 on. So $6 on this. It is a size large. I usually don't find the larger sizes in Vince. And so I think I'm probably going to be able to uh, mark this one up just a little bit because of that. It is black. It has long sleeves made out of silk and just a really classic piece that you could wear really anywhere. It would match with really anything that you're doing. And finally, I have a Cloth and Stone. This is another brand that I really enjoy selling because they have such a distinct style. And when people know they like this chambray style, then they tend to get more than one. Very comfortable to wear. It's very soft. It does have the longer sleeves. These are the three-quarter sleeves. And... I really recommend uh, transitioning into the colder months to look into sam some chambray because it does tend to be a very popular uh, material uh, for tops. And so if you if you pair that with the, the fact that it's cloth and stone, which is sold at Anthropology, and you've got a winner here. I am going to end the video with my favorite category, which is dresses. I really like selling dresses because I find the return on them tends to be a bit better than other categories because it's a complete outfit. If you buy a pair of pants, you also need a top. If you buy a sweater, you also need a bottom. But with dresses, it really is your complete outfit. You throw on a pair of shoes and maybe some jewelry and you're done for the day. People are usually willing to spend a little bit more on a dress because of that. So first up, I have an anthropology piece. I paid half of $9.99, so $5. It is by the brand Maeve. And the reason I was attracted to this, other than the fact that it's anthropology and it is striped, um, stripes being pretty popular, um, was that this is a sweater dress. It has a, a very thick cotton uh, fabric that goes into it. And so sweater dresses definitely tend to pick up in the fall and is something that is worn throughout winter. So if you do find a sweater dress and you put that as a keyword, it should get attention for whatever piece you are selling. This one is called the Haven Dress, and I was able to find some stock photos for it, and I'm going to actually walk you through how to find stock photos um, for anthropology, which tends to be a little bit tricky. Next up is a J. Crew piece. I love selling J. Crew because it has always has a style number on it. So here, this is new with tags, and you can see it has style A9979. When you type that in, you will find that this is the J. Crew Collection Daisy Jacquard dress in navy. And I really like collection. Let me show you how you can tell if you have collection. It generally tends to be a black tag and underneath J. Crew it does say collection. And that's important because this tends to be their more expensive line. So you have the J. Crew with two dots under it, which is factory, the regular J. Crew, 
and then collection. And I also believe that the collection, they have less pieces that they sell because it tends to be a little more scarce online. Um, and so it just doesn't seem like they sell as much of these pieces as the others. Next up, we have a Smart Wool dress. Smart Wool is a fabulous brand to buy. Uh, people just go nuts over this online. It lasts for a very long time. It is perfect for those cold months. I spent $5, half of $9.99 on this piece. It has a large cowl neck on it. It is a shorter piece. It goes down just above the knee, but it does have long sleeves on it. So if you wanted to wear um, some tights under this with uh, boots, it would be absolutely perfect. And of course, the color is great for the season. Up next is some LuLaRoe. I know there is some controversy, or I shouldn't say controversy. Pretty much everyone right now is agreeing that LuLaRoe is just not doing as well as it once was. There are certain pieces that do better than others. Uh, this is a Disney piece. This is uh, Jack Skellington from the um, cartoon Nightmare Before Christmas. And it is a dress. And the reason I picked it up is one, it's Disney. And so anything that you find with the Disney print generally tends to do well. Um, and two, it was only $5. It is not new with tags, but it is in excellent condition. And I did a little bit of searching online before I grabbed it, like I do with all LuLaRoe pieces now, just to make sure that there is a market for it. And it turns out that this print with the really, really vibrant Jack Skellington is a little bit more rare than some of the other Disney prints. So hopefully that will increase the value when I mark it up to sell it. Now for the last dress, I have a Lily Pulitzer. And Lily is really known for really bright, fantastic, whimsical uh, prints. Because when she first got started, when Lily first got started designing, she worked at a juice bar and she would get down in Florida, I want to say, and she would get juice all over her clothes. And so she thought to combat that, she would have super bright prints in really um, dynamic uh, color ranges. And that would kind of hide the fact that she might be wearing some carrot juice or some pineapple juice on her. Uh, so this is really kind of out of the norm for a lily, a little, a little black dress like this with sequins on it. Um, that being said, Lily is an amazing um, brand that has very, very high quality standards. And so if you are looking for a little black dress, you really can't go wrong with something like this. This is called the Aliyah dress in black. And it would be really perfect if you were going for maybe a night out on the town or had a little bit more formal of an evening planned maybe around the holidays. And so I was really excited. Whenever I find Lily, I always give it a good look over. Oftentimes I will grab it. Again, this is a little out of the ordinary, but I figure, hey, for, you know, $7 or $7.50, then um, it was worth it to me. So earlier I told you that I was going to show you how I find stock photos for my anthropology pieces. Now, this approach doesn't work every single time. However, I find that more often than not, I can find the piece that I'm looking for. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your search engine and you're going to type in as much information as you have about a certain anthro piece. So first of all, you know that it's from anthropology which apparently I can't spell. There we go. And you know that it is a Maeve sweater dress that we're looking for. It has short sleeves and a boat neck and it has stripes on it. So I just type in all of the keywords I can think of. And now I'm going to look at images. I am going to scroll through until I find a piece that looks like mine. Okay, here we go. This is absolutely my dress. This is the Maeve Cotton Stripes Dress for Women, Anthropology Dress Haven Stripe Navy Blue Ivory. Go back to Google, type that in. 
And sure enough, this is the Anthropology website. So as soon as I click on this, I am going to find a stock photo for the piece. So now that we know the name for it, I'm going to look at some of the prices that it is sold for. So I'm going to click on sold items. And it looks like two have sold. Uh, one was new for $40 and one was an excellent use condition. A best offer was accepted uh, below $13. So now that I know what it's being sold at on eBay, I can go to Poshmark. Let me pull it up. And yes, that's definitely the dress. Let's click on Solds. And we've got 30, 28, 30, 25, 25, 30. So another piece that we were looking at was the J. Crew Collection Daisy Jacquard dress. And I'm looking at this. And it looks like there's only one new one listed on eBay, and they want $235 for it. So that is quite a lot. Let's see if any have sold. And it does not look like any have sold on eBay. It bodes well that this is so high for the one that hasn't sold, because if this is really high, then uh, I can price mine a little bit lower than this and hopefully they would purchase mine instead. When I look on Poshmark for the same Daisy Jacquard dress, it looks like these have sold in other colors. We've got a yellow for 38, a pink for 40, 55 for yellow, and 25 for pink. Again, uh, these are not the navy blue like I have and these are also not new with tags. Let's see how many are available. We have a new with tags for $77, $32, and then $175. So it looks like I got a really good deal by getting this dress, and it looks like I have a stock photo right here that I would be able to use to post it. So again, I would choose uh, the price for this piece, probably about $99 would be my guess. I would list it on both sites, and I would see where the best offer would come from. Next up is the smart wool uh, dress, and just in general, we're looking at smart wool at uh, $40 best offer, uh, $38, $22. This is, I want to say that's, it says it's a dress, but that looks pretty short for a dress. Uh, $30 best offer, $40 best offer, uh, $30 with a wrap dress. So it looks to me like Smart Wool is going to be doing really well in sale. I would probably put it around um, $30 is what I want to get for it. So I'd probably put it around maybe $40, $45 with best offer. For the LuLaRoe piece, I, was, I told you earlier that the bright color you don't see all the time. And so I'm just flipping through a bunch of these Jack Skeleton uh, dresses and as you can see there's a lot of purple ones but not so many of that bright color oh here there we go that's one just like mine this is a size medium it sold at the beginning of August uh, for a best offer of $43 so they probably took you know 30 something this one was brand new though I do not have a brand new one here's another one that looks like mine uh, it's sold on auction for $25, brand new. Here's brand new best offer at $25. Okay, so used, I would probably place this at $19.99 and take, you know, hopefully somewhere close to that. For the Lily Pulitzer, it was the Alaya cocktail dress. And so we've got one that sold for $49.99, another one that sold brand new $49.99. So those are the two that have sold on eBay. We're going to go to Poshmark now, and it looks like sold one new with tags for $30. That was quite the deal that person got. And obviously a stock photo I'd be able to use. 
a size uh, zero for $22, a new with tags for $135. That is a good sale. And then over here, we've got a uh, size zero for $65 that's sold. So I would probably say that I'm going to price this maybe $39 and see uh, where I could get the best offer from. Take anything, you know, above 30 would be fantastic. Okay, so I lied a little bit when I said that that was my last court category with dresses because I have kind of a, um, a bit of an extra here that I wanted to show you. I always slip through the blazers like I was showing you earlier because I find some of my best deals in blazers. I think a lot of people stay away from them. I'm not sure if it's because they're a little more expensive or if they people might think that there's not a lot of money in them, but I am a huge blazer fan. So as I was flipping through, I saw this tag made in Italy and I knew from uh, my previous trips to to Goodwills what that meant. That meant that this is going to be a Max Mara and I recognized that text and sure enough as soon as I opened it up to look at the tag right there Max Mara. This is a very exclusive brand that goes for hundreds if not thousands of dollars for suits and dresses when it's new. Um, I find Max Mara quite a bit actually in my area and I want to say it's because women who work in the city in New York City and they're very professional they will wear this so if they're in maybe finance or banking or law um, things of that nature this would definitely be something that they would want to wear and so I do find it uh, for this particular piece I paid uh, I don't see a tag, but I, I believe I paid either $10 or $12 for it. And I just wanted to put this in as a little extra. I am not going to be selling this myself. I will show you um, how I decide where I uh, sell my blazers. I will show you that in just a minute. But I just want to encourage everyone to do a little bit of research on blazers. Find out what kind of... Uh, brands that you have in your area and really try to take advantage of it because there is a lot of money to be made with this particular category. So next up, we're going to the computer so I can show you exactly how you can make the most out of this blazer. So with a designer piece like Max Mara, uh, if you go the traditional route, which would be eBay and Poshmark, I want to show you how much you could potentially make. So these are the solds for the blazers, a lot like the one that I picked up. This one sold for $44.99. This one $49 on best offer. This one $3.99, this person got a steal. $49 on best offer, $29. And so as you can see, this blazer does well on eBay, uh, but is that the best place for it? So now let's look at Poshmark. Now if you were on here and you had a blazer, this sold for $80. This one sold for 15. Here is one for 50. So obviously, again, you're doing rather well with the blazer, but if you think outside the box a little bit, I think that you could do even better than this. Now, when you list on these two places, either eBay or Poshmark, they take out a fee, which is about 20%. You also have to take photos. You also have to ship the item. So there's a lot that goes into it. One of the ways you can kind of skip through that is by consigning it to an online consigner. Now, two of the most popular are gonna be the Real Real, which I'm showing you now, and thread up. Now for designer pieces, it's definitely something that you wanna think about because for this same Max Mara uh, blazer, they're selling $175 for this blazer, $115 for this one, $115, $145. Uh, they're getting really, really great prices for these. Now one thing you have to think about with the real real is your consignment price is about 50%. So you'd only make about half of what they're selling it for. They also have lots of deals, which pushes the price even lower. Um, however, I would contend, if you're gonna be selling this for $50 on eBay, and they take 20% for selling fees, or you could send it into the real real, not worry about listing, not worry about photographing, not worry about shipping or any of that, and you could make 
half of 115. I say that's a pretty good deal. And so I am definitely not against online consigners. I especially like ThreadUp and they have a new service that's called ThreadUp's Lux where they take designer pieces. So I typed in the brand name in the payout estimator as well as the category. Now the payout estimator, it gives you a reasonable amount that you can expect something to sell on ThreadUp. And you get there, www.threadup.com backslash cleanout backslash payout estimator. And so you type that in, you go here, you put in the information, and this is how much they put in your pocket. This is not how much it sells for, this is how much you actually make from the piece that is sold on ThreadUp. Now, they're really great about the Lux program. It takes a very, very small commission. I believe they're gonna to start to take a bigger bite um, soon, but right now they're trying to grow their Lux program. So they wanna give people as much money as they can so more people send in designer goods and they can get to be well known for selling designer. So in your pocket for selling a Max Mara blazer, we're looking at $112, $107, $126. Not every time you're going to be making this much money. This is a jacket that sold and you would be getting $54 from it. But again, to me, this is an absolutely amazing deal. So don't overlook online consignments when you're finding designer pieces because ThreadUp is exactly where I'm going to be sending my blazer and hoping for maybe a $100 payout for something that I paid under $15 for. Whew. For everyone that stayed with me for this hour, thank you so much. I didn't realize this video was gonna be so long. Um, I also tried to shorten it by skipping a few of the listing pieces for the shirts and the pants. I hope you don't mind, but I think I gave you the tools, at least that I use, to price my items. Um, I wanna say thank you again for watching this. I will be making more videos. If there's something that you wanna see, make sure to leave it in the comments below. I'll definitely try to get to it and I will hopefully be talking to everyone soon. Uh, this is the New York Thrifter saying goodbye for now.